What's up you guys, welcome back to Wide Body Nation. We have Josh here, he's a professional photographer of over 20 years. Josh, what do you think the one thing that people need to know if they're entering the photography space and want to make some money? Right, so the one piece of advice I would give everybody, especially if you want to get into car photography like I do, is to read or work on things outside of the photography realm because there are, there are hundreds and hundreds of people that have all the equipment they have the talent, they're great at shooting, but they, they focus so much on that that they completely neglect the networking and marketing side of their business. So they don't uh, they don't have any clear direction of getting their name out there. Hmm. And um, So tools like, obviously Instagram is probably one of the easiest tools, sure, but yeah. is, that, is that actually useful or? That's, that's very, very useful, but it's, it's not a, you have to do more than that. Right, right. You've got to you've got to be out there shaking hands while fist bumps and right yeah this <laughs> point elbow yeah. taps and all that right. stuff. You got to be out there meeting people. I mean, um, you know, going to as many cars and coffee meets as you can. If you've never been to Nashville Cars and Coffee, you've got to go. Uh, Columbia Cars and Coffee is great, but just really getting that face to face thing where you, I'm at the point now where I meet people and they go, oh, I know who you. Yeah, are. yeah. You know, I've seen your work. That's awesome. Yeah, you know? that's cool. And that you're not going to get that from purely Instagram unless you're just incredible. Right. Instagram kind of seems like a space where you your product might get a little watered down. Like, I mean, yeah. if I pull up my phone right now and I see your awesome work compared to just my like crappy filters on top of the C8, <laughs> now yes, I can tell that yours is better, but can I tell it's 10 times, you know? Like, yeah. I feel like Instagram is, if you're not looking at it on a big blow up, it might it might just kind of diminish it, so. Sure, you live in that little three by four. Right, room. yeah, and, and everyone's so, scrolling so fast too, they might be like, oh, that's cool, like, but then, right. I mean, is that, that's maybe not converting to money, right? right? I mean, right. it's converting yeah. views, but it's not. Yeah, it's getting you exposure, and it's, you right. know, it's it's broadcasting what your brand is. You know, yeah. my, my style of photography, I've been told, is instantly recognizable. Okay. You know, they can tell, just at a quick glance, oh, that's one of Josh's photos. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess my style is very, very distinct. I just do what I do. Yeah. You know. Um, well, that's good. It seems consistent, even if you're not even trying to necessarily right. be consistent, right? Right. Yeah. So on the networking side, are you targeting certain people or certain cars, or you're when it, when it comes to networking, I do everything. I, I okay. go to all the things. Right. You know, okay. I, I go to business after hours. I'm in a networking group, a local networking group. Um, like I said, I work very closely with the cars and coffee guys. I go yep. to as many of the, of the Nashville cars and coffees as I can. Um, you know, I shoot for velocity, so being there, I get to work in the car culture a whole lot. Yep. There's a whole lot of people coming and going that I like to talk to. So for velocity, can you explain that real quick? How you, so what velocity is and how you became their, sure. their so, guy? So Velocity Motor Cars is a company in Nashville. They sell um, basically anything exotic. Right. any kind of cars that are exotic they're also getting into boats now <laughs> um, so when I when I first decided to take the leap to be a professional car photographer I had a, a list of goals that I wanted to accomplish and on that list was to shoot for velocity in right. some capacity at the time they had a guy that was doing all their all their inventory shots and yep. all their cool guy shots I didn't want to step on his toes or anything so what I did is I, I just went to velocity one day mm -hmm. knocked on the door said hey guys I'm a professional photographer I know you have a guy, you know, don't want to, yeah, yeah. don't want to ruffle any feathers. What I would like to do is shoot a couple of your cars and I'll give you all the images. I'm not going to charge you for them. You can right. do whatever, whatever you whatever. want. You can use them. You can not use them, but at least give you an idea of what I can do should you need me in the future. Okay. And they reluctantly said, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, we don't have anything going on today. So, <laughs> you know, so that day I shot a 911 Turbo, an Aston Martin Vanquish, I think. Claren SLR. Nice. And I spent all day there. I did all composite shots. Just uh, in the dark. Indoor. Indoor in the dark. Yeah, I didn't even drive them. I had their yeah. tech guy drive because I was like, okay. yeah. I don't want yeah. to screw up the first time I've been here. And um, so I gave them the images. They said, hey, thanks. Cool. Great. So this was in the springtime around October of that same year. My phone rings and it's John from Velocity. Yeah. He said, hey, bud, our photographer just left. I have an Audi R8 V10 Plus that I need shot. Can you come shoot it? I said, what time do you want me to be there? So we open at 10. I'll be there at 10. Nice. So the rest is history. Uh, I started off just doing their photography. Then I started doing video work for them. And then I took over their social media. And then I started running their website. And just bit by bit, you know, kind of snowballed into, you know, yeah, I mean, being a 
a full face, yeah. yeah. So, so, if so you being get, a part of that world has given me a whole lot of credibility oh, yeah. in Nashville. Yeah, it seems like your that was your foot in the door. Exactly. Yeah. But if you guys haven't seen um, Josh's work on Velocity's website, that's a real quick way to kind of see where Josh kind of got his foot in the door. And then obviously he's got a lot more to talk about. But you know that I feel like that's a real tangible thing because you spend you know how many hours a week down there? What 20, 25, right. I think. In, oh, at least, yeah. And I get I, since I run their Instagram page, I get messages all. Oh, uh, and you're redirecting. Hey, I want to be a car photographer. Oh, okay. you know, uh, yeah. Do you guys need car photography? That is not the way to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> that gets usually the person that runs the Instagram page is the photographer. So all the right. Like, nope. Yeah. So, yeah. like I said earlier, you've got to do the face to face. You got right. to meet people. Oh, you yeah. got to make an impression. You've got to. Yeah. You not only kick the door in, but then you offer your services for free. Right. It's. Exactly. I, I was just watching the uh, because I, I just bought the drone. You guys know that and. So I've been kind of drinking. Same one. Yeah, so Josh is the one who told me which one to get, and I'm glad that I followed what he said. But I've been kind of drinking, uh, drinking up the knowledge on YouTube on the drone stuff, and uh, obviously there's people out there trying to make a lot of money with drone photography, right? And the the suggestion from the professional drone pilot who makes you know whatever amount of money doing that, he said exactly what Josh just told you guys, and I have not talked to Josh about that at all. It's funny that both professionals say the same thing go face to face even in, in 2020 2021 put a mask on go face to face yeah. or or get on their calendar go offer services for free and then hey maybe they're not going to call you tomorrow or next week but i mean it said it took you what about six months yeah. to get the call yeah. but you know josh's work was good enough that he was there he was the next guy up on in that on deck circle so i think that that uh that speak vol speaks volumes even if you're not in the photography industry either i mean yeah it's universal right you know so i mean that's kind of the it's kind of what i got after with uh like i realized that the c8 was the kind of this crazy networking tool that's how we met yeah it's, it's how me and josh met it's it's how the next uh gentleman well so josh is kind of the the opening point for all the people that are going to be coming on the podcast because pretty much the next five people that come on uh, I all, I met through Josh's referrals out. So um, networking, networking, yeah. networking. Yeah, it's pretty much, <laughs> pretty much it. Um, but yeah, so what are, what are you thinking about the current car scene? Um, are you you know are you excited about kind of the whole way that like the EV scene is is hot on the investment side? But I haven't really. I feel like everybody's talking about Tesla stock and all the EV stock, but I haven't seen. <clears throat> Like, you know, Chrysler's not coming out with like a Charger Hellcat electric, you know? I, I wouldn't hold your breath. I think Chrysler and Tesla should partner up. That'd be like the most dark horse partnership ever. That would be cool. Yeah. It would make sense because Chevy and Ford are both. Horsepower, yeah. yeah, Chevy and Ford. Chevy and Ford are both right. investing heavy in like, uh, I believe it's, I think Ford is with Rivian. I believe Amazon yeah. and Rivian and Ford are all together. Yeah. And then GM tried to do the. Uh, the Nikola investment, but obviously Nikola, as some of you guys know, uh, just basically drove down a hill and off a cliff uh, because they faked. Did you, did you hear about the fake trucking thing? No. They roll. They did a roller. Their prototype that was supposed to be a running and driving was a roller. They towed it to the top of a hill of like a one percent grade and then just flicked it down the hill and <laughs> took all the rolling shots. Hey, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> At some point, you got to make the product, though. It's like yeah. so, but um. So you just shot the new Camaro, you said, with uh, right, right that shoot with Puppy Knuckles was five new Camaros. I didn't shoot; he did all. Okay, the yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just there. Um, but uh, a little yeah. bit of networking involved there, though. Exactly, so who's yeah. who's Puppy Knuckles? Uh, so he's a, uh, a world class car photographer. I think that's all he does is car photography. Okay, so so he's been able to niche down very narrow, and he does he work strictly for GM? No, he's a private. Or oh, he's yeah, okay. He's a so kind private. of contractor. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so is that kind of uh, so as a as an entry or mid level photographer? Mm -hmm. Would you say that you should not niche down too much? No. No. So no. like it, weddings, it takes, and, it takes a long time to okay. really to carve out your your area of expertise, and and cars were natural for me because I love cars. I've always right. loved cars. My first word was car. So starting out. What I what I did starting out is I shot everything. I did 
fashion photography, I did a couple weddings, I did product photography, I did food photography, I did everything. Okay, cars were a natural thing for me because that's always been my passion. Uh, cars and jets pretty much are what I've been obsessed yeah. with since, since I was a little kid. So obviously the thing that you're super, super obsessed with, definitely you're gonna yeah. be spending, you're gonna spend more time with it, right. you're gonna be more meticulous about it. So that's where I kind of drifted um, and it, it just took time to right. get to the point where I could fund Right. just car photography. 99% of what I do is car photography, but I also, I still do fashion stuff, and it's great to have that in your toolkit to fall back on, uh -huh. you know, so when a magazine calls and says, hey, we want to do a, a cover shoot, you know, for XYZ, you know, mm -hmm. let's go to work. Well, yeah, I mean, money is money, first of all, exactly. and then also, yeah. if, you're, if your name is associated with a professional photo that's in a, like you said, magazine website that's not just yours, or not just Velocity, it's right. like, you know, it is getting your name out there, sure. which just goes back to the networking side of it. The more pro like, the more market share you have, yeah. the better. So that, I mean, it's kind of like your your living resume, right? Like, if you want to eventually work for Chevy or Ford or or get a contract, whatever. Right. What I'm I'm probably misphrasing that, but instead of them just saying, "Okay, Josh Vaughn uh, awesome car photos, man," like what else you got? Well, right. you can be like, "Hey, here's X Y Z Fashion Magazine." Uh, you know, here's velocity that I do weekly. You know, yeah. all of these different things make you super well-rounded. Yeah. But obviously, cars being the thing you're probably best at, because yeah. you can probably see the shot the best for a car. Oh sure, yeah. I, I go into a shoot with all the shots in my head already. I know what I'm going to get. I kind of pre-plan everything. Okay. So I know, you know, if I'm if I'm shooting with a, a C8 Corvette, you know, okay. I definitely want to get those those beautiful ridges on the hood. Yeah, that, you know, it that is contrast crazy. contrast across the top of the hood. You've got to be at a high angle to get that with the sun in the right, uh -huh. right angle. But. White versus black C8. Because I, I had the white one yeah. uh, back in like March, April. Yeah. I thought the black one was going to photograph terribly. Mm -hmm. But Josh did a really good job with it. Now, it didn't have the gold wheels yet, so we might have to get some new photos. <laughs> uh, what do you think, though, as far as like dealing with the, well you saw the same car yeah two yeah. different colors so sure i've shot these in red black white is that an orange one in the last one too? uh i haven't had an orange one okay yet. they had a red one so what what one do you think was the, the best i'm not i'm not trying to coax you into yeah. i'm i'm partial to black because i used to have a black corvette True. actually just in my corvette yeah so i'm partial to black i think the white looked really really good though Especially the white the looked lighting. like a lambo lighting that we had actually a guy <laughs> a couple days later said I saw you out here doing a photo shoot with a Lambo and I looked at him like I haven't had a Lambo out here yeah, in a while <laughs> yeah. he's like yeah it was like last Monday and I was like that was a Corvette no it wasn't yeah. was that when we had the black wheels on it already or was it I think that was with the black okay. wheels yeah. yeah he thought it was a Lamborghini yeah that, that white one at with, a distance yeah with the white wheel or the black wheels and the black accents all the carbon flash and then yeah. the white I mean whew, it was. I missed that one, but it made a lot of sense to, to part ways with it. So these cars uh, are just phenomenal. Though. Yeah, I mean, bang for your buck wise, it's crazy. I mean, all I got to do, I think, with this one is probably, probably I'm going to test the pads out first, just mm -hmm. put some better pads on it, okay. and then if it still needs rotors, then go rotors. Okay. Um, but back to photography, because here's here is I think the pivotal question. Because if they're watching this long, they're going to want to know this. Okay. Okay, so Josh, we buy off on your, you know, kick someone's door in. This is this is me. Here's my work for free. Now, after you've done that initial push, which you know, 99% of people won't do, for that 1% who starts getting their name out there, right. how do they start charging fair prices? Like, how do you go from being free to charging? Money? I feel like there's a a well, line there. Yeah. Uh, you've got to do a good job of conveying, like, listen, for every hour that I'm spending in camera, okay. there's at least three hours on the back end uh -huh. that I'm going to spend editing okay. editing these photos. So you've got to really convey or tell the story of, look, you know, what you see is only a portion of where the work okay. is going to be. And really kind of build value in your time. Right, okay. You know, an hour shoot is easily a half a day's work. A two to three hour shoot is easily a full day of work factor in the editing so you have to figure out what your half day what I did anyway you have to figure out what your half day rate is and your full day rate so basically I charge based on how much time I'm investing in this shoot so I just did the reverse math I want to make X amount of dollars per month and then do the math backwards from there I'm going to need to spend at least several half day shoots and then I'm going to need at least 10 full day shoots throughout the month and huh. yeah that's how okay I yeah Matt, I, 
I guess the mathing your way back into it is yeah. that makes sense to me, mm -hmm. and that also definitely aligns with some of the business books I've kind of read. Kind of like, you know, hey, what's your goal, and then just start ma yeah, yeah, reverse engineer it. You know. Yeah. However, to some people who are like, so say we're talking to you know talking to some people at Cars and Coffee, you know, like straight up 17 year old who just got their license, or yeah. or someone who's who's newer in the game that's not necessarily making, looking to make it like a full-time, right, right. you know, $6,000 a month. Like just fund no, their camera equipment. Essentially, like, yeah, I, I wanna go out and uh, like to me, you know, yeah. I, like if someone said, hey, I wanna use your drone and your GoPros and your Corvette for a half a day, yeah. I know how much to charge for the Corvette because I've been in the rental space, but I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't know. So is, is, you think, Offer offer more value and just kind of charge a, a low but fair rate initially, or or are you kind of cementing yourself in for being the cheap guy I, I at that point? Being cheap is not the way to go. You know there there are dozens of guys that would do do your photo shoot for free. And right, that's the wrong way to do it. There are also dozens of guys that would do it for a hundred bucks. You okay. know, a hundred bucks, and I'll give you four thousand photos. Which is yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah. Too much. What people do. No, you know, because um, that means they probably didn't edit anything. Though. Yeah, it's just like it's like buying a nice suit. You know, you, you don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a nice suit. No, you know. Okay, it's like going to Sears, you know, or wherever. You, you want to spend minimum, I don't know, seven hundred dollars on a nice suit. Right. You know, and it's, it kind of works the same way with photography. You don't want to undersell yourself. So, I've lost, I've lost business before because you know, too much basically. <laughs> I'll say, here's my rate, and they go. And are they looking at the product when they? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Okay. they're just they're just cheap and they want to negotiate, and I and I hold firm like no, that's my price. Okay. But <clears throat> in that that may be true, but at the same time, I can do two shoots and make as much money as a guy that's charging a hundred dollars can do twelve shoots. Right. So you don't. You know? Yeah, you don't need exactly. You don't need that. I mean, at at the point where you're at, I would say yeah, you don't need people unless I you guess, own an F1. <laughs> oh, so you're saying if you own an F1 car, you can just I'll do whatever bring you want. the price down. Yeah, yeah. Really want to budge, you know, okay. Want but yeah, yeah. I've got the content. I've I've shot just about everything out there. Right. You know, I don't need your yeah I mean, for my for my portfolio. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, so on the flip side, though, guys, if you do, for instance, I mean, the C8 has our that ship has sailed. But that, like one of the reasons that I knew I got to know Josh was because I was one of the first people to own a C8 in Tennessee yeah. um, and so Josh hadn't even got one hadn't seen one in the metal yet and so that was a good way for me to both meet Josh and then also um, like I have no idea how much how much professional photo shoots cost but it's kind of like a using using what you guys have if you have something that's unique to kind of like leverage relationships and network does work right so um, you know if there is a new car that comes out and you guys are um, either looking to grow your business, you may like, cause I mean, it's probably helpful. I, I mean, you're already established, but for someone who was like coming up on the scene, sure. whatever that next big car is, getting that all, up front ASAP, like a delivery day photo sure, type yeah. of deal, yeah, it's is deal. probably a big deal, I would assume, right? Because it's like, everyone starts asking questions. How right. did you? How did you get that shot? You know, or yeah. you know, because you might even hit the person up and say, "Hey, man, nice shot. How'd you get it?" Yeah. You know, and then they would say yeah. that you, you could, you know, they a, could leverage. I was the first little photographer little. in Tennessee to shoot with the 911, the brand new 992 911. Okay. Um, unfortunately, it was a convertible. I, I prefer the coupe. But, Same. <laughs> yeah. But then I was also because of that shoot, I did that for Porsche Nashville. Because of that shoot, I got oh, yeah. the very first Taycan. Yep. That they got, which is the Taycan Turbo, not the Turbo S, but the Turbo. And I got to take that out for a photo shoot, so I was the first for both of those. And that was, for me, that was huge because I'm a Porsche fanatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, having that that very first shoot for the local area, yeah, that was really, really cool for us. Nice. Yeah, and then um, I guess to kind of start, to start wrapping it up, um, as far as local goes, um, you know, do you... Are, you know, do you kind of go where the work is or do you kind of like, you got a bubble, I mean, you you know, you live 45 minutes from Nashville, but like, do you see Nashville as kind of like the, 
uh, the center of yeah, gravity. Yeah. Nashville's my base for sure. Right. I mean, I, I travel everywhere. And uh, the other piece of advice I would give is to, to set goals. Okay. You know, like the whole thing with velocity. That was that was one of my big goals for car photography in uh -huh. business. Um, my next my next goal, next run of run the ladder is to use my passport for my business. So to travel, get the shots. <laughs> So to travel, to have someone hire me to do an international shoot. Oh, okay, okay. Because <clears throat> this year, the furthest I traveled this year was I went to Connecticut mm -hmm. uh, to photograph a yacht. But, um, huh. you know, that I think that's the next one for me is to, I think once you've traveled internationally for work, you know, that, that a little right. bit more legitimate. Oh, especially if they're pulling you to, to pay you, right? Exactly, right. yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, there's got to be a paycheck attached. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's a, that's an interesting goal. Um, I feel like you know, especially. I mean, I, I don't know enough about the photography scene, but setting those rungs. I mean, for that velocity one, just really seems like a very targeted goal. So yeah. So for instance, here's one that we could kind of translate because there's only you know one or two you know luxury you know motor car dealers in per city, right? Right. So what I did was instead of like you know filming at velocity you were going to atlanta to, to like film car reviews or inventory was i went to just the local dodge dealership in columbus yeah to do and then, and now you know they they'll toss me the keys to whatever i mean i'm not doing burnouts and things you know and <laughs> usually i just pull them out in the parking lot but just kind of you're like chunking your way to right to your your eventual goal which right. i assume is in the in the car scene still um, but yeah, so um, a little bit, a little bit of background to wrap it up with Josh. So Josh, you want to tell him about kind of how you transitioned from Air Force into, you know, basically, you know, you got your civilian job on the outside, right? But then that's right. then you pedaled uh, your way to being able to just basically do photography full time, right? right? So I, <clears throat> I was in the Air Force for six and a half years. Uh, lived in all over the U.S. Lived in Germany for three and a half years. Uh, I'm back finished up school, got my degree finally, and then uh, just, uh, I did a few jobs here and there, nothing really that I enjoyed, uh, worked in sales, I worked in the oil industry for a little while, and uh, I just got to the point where I, I wanted to work for myself, you know, I wanted to be my own boss, and I was obsessed with photography, that's the one thing that I could sit and do all day, like the thing that you said in yeah, one of your What makes you forget to eat? Yeah, yeah, as soon as you said that in your video, like, <laughs> I do that all the time, yeah. I'll probably do it today because I'm going to shoot right after this. Yep. And it's my passion, and that's what I want to do. And, and life has been so much more fulfilling after taking that leap. It was a scary thing to do. Um, but, man, I, I tell you what, it's it's paid dividends that you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. And it just the quality of life is, I think, unmatched. I don't think you can really work for anyone else and enjoy what you do as much as I do. Well, yeah, I mean, it seems like, um, you know, well, so one of the things that you do that I think is an app that is like the, the real hack level of like work for yourself, but also be stable is that you found it. So if like you guys can find a day job while you're still <laughs> jumping off the bridge of being your own boss, yeah, yeah. that helps. So for instance, I'm still in the army, right? But um, you know, I use the ebbs and flows of the army to do, to do networking, to do YouTube, to do the rental car business. So that ideally in a couple years, and I'm sure this is pretty much how you leveraged it, right? Like you, you, you wanted to find a stable job yeah. and then you just, you know, in your off hours, whenever, whenever you need lunch breaks, off hours, whenever you're not spending time with your family, editing away, going to photo shoots, building up that profile, that website, that body of work where at some point it's just gonna it stands for itself so that you know it makes the normal day job seem like kind of a joke you know yeah. not, and not a joke as in like it's silly but it's just at some point you can match or beat your own paycheck you know and that's kind of the goal i feel like a lot of us have right is do what we really love to do mm -hmm. and get paid equal to or more than what we were doing for someone else some other right. business whatever it may be you know army who, who cares what it is yeah um, so is that kind of how you sort of sun it or so I, I left the finance world in 20, 
2014. Left it, decided to, to jump both feet in and do photography full time. Just grind, grind, grind. Oh, grind, so you went full. Yeah. You just cold turkey? No parachute. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, my wife was working at the time. She was finishing her PhD. And, um, you yeah, know, she said, you're, you're miserable doing what you're doing. Just quit <laughs> and chase this thing. We'll, yeah. You know, figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So I did. And, um, you know, I was I was grabbing paycheck, paycheck, you know, here, there, here, there. Nothing was consistent until Velocity came on. Right. And then it, it started getting more more consistent, which is great. And I was uh, I went through a leadership course. It was called Leadership Clarksville. I met a guy named John Patterson, who is the uh, administrator at the Clarksville Regional Airport. And oh, yeah. about a year and a half later, after we completed that course, he called me out of the blue and said, uh, hey, I want you to come out here to the airport. I got I got a talked to you about sat down in his office and said I want you to come work for me I want you to do business development for the airport and at the time you know I was rocking and rolling with the business I didn't need a job yeah and I told him that I said I don't need a job man <laughs> I've got my own business you know things are great however you know and uh, he said listen I, I love what you do I love your work I want you to continue doing that okay however I want you to do business development for us as well so the whole networking thing of what I do, I, you know, I told you, I go to all the things. Yeah. So now I go as a representative of Josh Vaughn Photography, but also the Clarksville Regional Airport, spreading the gospel of Johnny Alamo. Yeah. And I mean, then then you, I mean, you got Chevy to bring the Camaro shoot, right? And we did the shoot at the airport, so it's right. all kind of blended into yeah. one one meshed. You know, it's all intertwined, which is fantastic. And it, I mean, it's mutually beneficial too. It's not like some sort of weird parasitic relationship <laughs> either. Like, yeah, yeah. You, if you're good at being Josh Vaughn photography, like, I think the, the gentleman who you met, what was his name? Uh, John the... John. Yeah, John Patterson. Yeah, so, I mean, he was boss. very smart to to not only get you to come get in the seat for the, you know, for the recruitment, but then he was able to leverage and, and kind of show you that, no, it's not us taking from you back to Josh working for us necessarily. It's like a symbiotic you know mutually beneficial deal yeah. at least that's how it sounds to me yeah for sure and it's it's been hugely beneficial for my business because i have an airport to yeah that's i was gonna say <laughs> I, if you didn't bring it up i was <laughs> like you said photographers can say yeah, yeah let's the, do a photo shoot at the airport the cars and the jets yeah. i mean you got them both now yeah and you guys got to check out Josh's website. The amount of Ferraris and other cars that are then in front of some, I don't know planes very well, but what do you, what do you call them, Gulf Streams or something? Sure, know. there's a couple yeah. Gulf Streams in there. Yeah, so, and then you guys have a nice new hangar too that's like perfect We've for... got a brand new hangar where we did the Camaro shoot. Yeah, okay. um, Yeah, it's got a beautiful white gloss floor. It's, yeah, it's just picturesque. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better spot huh. to do shoots. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that that's why I think the, the, you know... It just seems like you basically matched it up. Like technically, you got a day job, but it's just it's just more fuel for the fire that is your your passion, I would yeah. assume. So, and then I mean, it probably helps you out a little bit as far as like the other way I look at the army is it's a little bit of a scaffolding for my life. It keeps me it keeps me honest, you know. Like, hey, you got to show up Monday morning, crush your PT, you know, all, like just kind of a little bit of of uh, being accountable to yourself. I, at least for me, that's big because I I do find myself more accountable to other people. Uh, than I do myself at times. Yeah. So it, I think a little bit of steadiness, at least for me right now, helps. I mean, you're a little bit farther along, so you're probably like, no, I'm good. All right. <laughs> but, well, Josh, I mean, I think you left us with a bunch of takeaways. Um, I think that the last thing we can kind of leave on is this, the thing that Josh brought up is the, you guys are still after this, you know, however many minutes this was, Still searching, you, you kind of, all the tactics and techniques we're talking about like resonate with you, but you guys don't know what it is that uh, you want to do. Uh, and it really goes back to the, what makes you forget to eat you know, model. Like, what do you guys find yourself doing? And, it, uh, and I really mean it, like if it is video games, then it's video games. <laughs> if, it's, if, it's, if it's calculus, then it's calculus. If it's cars, if it's photography, you know, outdoor stuff. I mean, Whistling Diesel made a super profitable YouTube channel for destroying trucks. So, I mean, maybe that's what makes him forget to eat. I don't know. But 
Whatever makes you guys forget to eat, don't just go jump off the entrepreneur bridge yet, but start, you know, start chipping away, start building up the body of work, whatever it is, whether it's carpet, like I got in the army, the big kick right now in the officer scene at least is everyone loves woodworking. Like every other officer I talk to <laughs> is like, yeah, I just started doing this woodworking thing. So some of them are just doing it for their own personal thing, but some people, That's all cool. they do is That's toss- cool man hobby. <laughs> I know, they, but I mean, some of them they're like, oh, I'll just toss a GoPro up to watch me do it and then I'll post it. There's a video out right now that it's called like the $55,000 bowl. And it's just the guy, he updates the title every time the YouTube video makes him more because it's how to make a wooden bowl. <laughs> and he just updates the title how much the money the video has made him wow. and so uh, but yeah so whatever makes you guys forget to eat but I uh, appreciate you coming on Josh um, hopefully well it's you know I, I gotta thank Josh personally because a lot of the people I know even the guy like my business coach uh, Luis that we'll be talking to later today he's a great friend who I met because of Josh and other people as well so um, met him through networking yeah I, you know I've networking through cars specifically yeah. so appreciate you guys tuning in um josh's information as far as his website his instagram and his uh 2020 uh montage video of uh, mainly car stuff but some other stuff in there too There's some jets yeah um <laughs> that is that's all down in the description below as well as the pinned comment we are going to go ahead and garage the c8 for now and i will see you guys for the next video Thank you.